Aloha, I'm Tatiana Kwong with Hawaiian Electric on Oahu. Mahalo for your time and keeping emergency preparedness and response top of mind for you and your ohana. This is the first episode of a three-part series in which we will be hosting community partners who are experts in the fields of emergency management and who will share what, they, what we can do better to prepare and respond during and after an emergency. Episode one will focus on Oahu's first responders, segment two on Maui County partners, and segment three on Hawaii Island response. As you know, June 1st marked the first day of hurricane season and it lasts until November 30th. Being prepared ahead of time is essential and we encourage everybody to visit our website at hawaiianelectric.com prepare to download your handbook on emergency preparedness and our latest quick tips which is a condensed version of our handbook and easily printable. It will walk you through the process of becoming better prepared. Joining us today, we're having Luke Myers, Administrator of the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, Jennifer Walter, Deputy Director from the City and County of Honolulu's Department of Emergency Management, and Assistant Chief Darren Chun from the Honolulu Police Department. Mahalo to all of you for your time and sharing your expertise. We wanted to give everyone an opportunity to share briefly what their agency is responsible for in emergency preparedness and response. And also two key things that you would want to bring to the public's attention. After that, we'll circle back with each of you for a couple of questions. Let's start with Luke Myers from Hawaii Emergency Management Agency. Aloha, welcome to the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency. Here at State Emergency Management, we provide the coordinating responsibilities for state emergency management in the state of Hawaii. We are located in Diamond Head uh, in the crater. During emergency and disasters, we support the four counties, state agencies, and federal agency partners in preparedness, response, mitigation, and recovery. We have a very close relationship with the city and county of Honolulu, Maui, Hawaii, and Hawaii Island. We also work with the National Guard and other partners when the times arise. All disasters start at the local level, and it is our responsibility when the counties are out of resources to support them. We stand by with a state warning point that monitors 24-7 various disasters and incidents across the state and across the Pacific. As the counties may run into issues with resources or personnel items, we help support them. We also may provide technical assistance in the forms of planning, training exercise, outreach, or other resources specifically for them. When a hurricane starts to approach the state, we stand up coordination calls and work with them and other partners on a routine basis. Currently for COVID-19, we've been stand up since early March. There's been a federal disaster declaration for this incident and we've been communicating with them on a routine basis, providing situational awareness and doing coordination calls. For hurricane season, we have six calls to action that we want you all to take advantage of from a preparedness perspective. One, get to know the hazards in your area. When the wind blows, when the ground shakes, when the areas flood, get to know the hazards where you live, work, and play. Two, sign up for county alerts. There are specific alert resources for your counties that you can sign up for. Three, have a plan for you and your family. Four, develop a kit. This year for hurricane season, we have an extra requirement for you to include hand sanitizer and mask for you and your loved ones. Five, consider investing in flood insurance. It's a real cheap form of mitigation for you and your family or for your business. And six, consider investing in hurricane clips or retrofitting your home for hurricanes. Thank you so much. Thanks, Luke. Those are all great, great tips. Next, let's go to Jennifer Walter, Deputy Director with City and County of Honolulu's Department of Emergency Management. Thank you. Um, so the City and County Department of Emergency Management coordinates preparedness and response programs and initiatives uh, for the city. So our, we have several different missions. So before a disaster, we're working to make sure that the city has plans ready that cover the full spectrum of natural or man-made hazards that might impact us. And that includes the current COVID-19 outbreak. 
Um, we maintain alert and warning systems to make sure that if there's something that we can send out that quick notice to our residents. Um, and we do community outreach to educate people on what the hazards are and how to protect themselves. And then during a disaster, we work with the whole community. So it's not just other city agencies, but we work with the private sector, with non-governmental agencies um, to respond to people's needs and help them get on the road to recovery. So we bring everything one together, make sure they're communicating and coordinating and meeting the needs of the population that's been impacted. Um, so that's what our role here is at the city and county. Two th key things that we'd like everyone to remember, um, uh, uh, summarize it as um, don't underestimate and don't wait. So don't underestimate. I think a lot of times um, we're used to the near miss hurricanes and what we really want people to understand is the impacts that even um, a category one or two storm could have on our island. It could generate a tremendous amount of debris it could close down roads for days or weeks until first responders could get to you and cause power outages that could extend a similar duration or even longer. So you really want people to understand the impacts and not to underestimate them. And so that's kind of leads to the second part is don't wait. Um, we really want people to be prepared and to heed that call to action, especially the items uh, that Luke outlined uh, from Haima. Um, because if you wait, it's going to be too late. If you don't know what to do and where to go and you don't have that supply kit, we've all seen how there's shortages at stores just in time. So we don't want you to wait to gather those critical supplies. We also really want you to have a plan for where you're going to shelter in an emergency. Um, know if you're in a home where whether or not it's safe to stay. Have you um, retrofitted your home with hurricane clips or have coverings for the windows? If you haven't, identify other options of places to go, um, preferably a family member who has a house that's been retrofitted, maybe your place of employment, maybe with a friend. And as a last resort, um, we'll have hurricane evacuation shelters open. And so knowing um, what to bring if you have to go to an evacuation shelter is really important. So that those are the two key things that we ask people to keep in mind, don't underestimate, and don't wait to get yourself ready to the threats that we face. Great advice from Jennifer. I know Hawaii has missed and has been really fortunate to have some really close calls, but some too, too much of a close call. So it is good to be always early and prepared and not have to be those shoppers at the last minute trying to go buy some stuff. Um, and finally, we'll turn it over to Assistant Darren, Darren Chen from the Honolulu Police Department. Thank you. I'm Assistant Aaron Chun from the Honolulu Police Department. Aloha. The Honolulu Police Department has approximately 1,800 officers and 450 civilian personnel. Our jurisdiction covers the entire island of Oahu and is divided into eight patrol districts. HPD works with law enforcement partners at the federal and state levels. And when it comes to emergencies, natural or man made, our officers are trained to respond alongside other first responders. I'd just like to share a couple of tips for everyone's awareness and to assist our department in the event of an emergency. So first, you know, during a major disaster or emergency, only call 911 if you need urgent assistance or help. If you're looking for information or updates, please check with reliable news sources, such as the local TV and radio stations. And please try and and don't believe everything that's posted on social media. Uh, stay off the roads unless absolutely necessary. Avoid placing your life and that of others in jeopardy. Uh, leave the roads open for emergency vehicles. If you have time, if you have to drive somewhere and the traffic signals aren't working, always we advise that you treat the intersections as four-way stops. Great advice, definitely. I know we have some curious people that want to go and, and look just for the sake of looking, but always get to stay off the road and leave it to you folks. Um, we, of course, echo everything that all of our partners are saying and also want to let people know, too, following a major storm or natural disaster, power can be interrupted, and we always do our best to restore it quickly and safely. Um, we always put safety of the public and our employees first. It's always been our top priority and it always will be. 
So before we even begin repairs after a storm, we determine whether the area is accessible and if there are any potential hazards. We also assess any damage to any equipment or materials such as a down power line and ensure that it's been de-energized before moving forward. Um, if needed, we re first repair the main transmission line and our substations, which serve as the backbone for our electric system. Next, we repair poles, equipment, lines, and underground cables in affected neighborhoods. Um, our crews then repair individual <coughs> service lines and also so the, re so the remaining customers in affected areas can be restored. And at that point, we then restore the system back to its normal condition by switching customers back to their normal circuits. So it's not a very <laughs> easy process. And during those times, we really, really appreciate our customers' patience. Um, for Oahu residents, you can always report an outage online at our website using our Oahu outage map or you can connect it through your smartphone at our Hawaiian Electric app, or you can always call 1-855-304-1212. One last advice from Hawaiian Electric would be to prepare to inspect any trees around your property, ensure they're not overgrown or growing into power lines. You know, if they are, Please consider hiring a tree trimmer to tree, trim the trees around your property that are in close contact with any service lines. And if you are considering planting new, new trees, please be sure to plant the right tree in the right place and at least have it 10 feet away from any overhead lines. And be sure to call Hawaii One Call Center at 811 at least a week prior so that they can help you identify any utility lines before digging. You know, it's a lot to remember, but there's, it's all good stuff. And um, from this point, we want to get to some questions and answers with our partners. So let's start with Haima Luke. Question for you. What kinds of steps has Haima been taking to better prepare our island should a hurricane hit? Thank you. Thank you. Perspective. Before hurricane season, we work with our county partners, our federal partners, and uh, other private sector partners on just getting ready for hurricane season. Um, we have already implemented our uh, preseason and beginning of the season uh, news releases and updating public education and information throughout the state, uh, basically reinforcing the 14-day message uh, on top of the challenges that we've uh, been going through with COVID. Uh, and we acknowledge that, uh, that there are some existing challenges there. The other thing specifically from a state emergency management perspective, we look internally at the documentation that we use for coordination, the plans, policies, and procedures. Uh, and we go through a review of those uh, as the hurricane season kicks off. So we've completed that. Finally, uh, we continue just to preach the 14-day uh, all hazards message with the public on, uh, as Jennifer and some others have mentioned, we intend to plan for the worst case scenarios, hoping for the best. Um, and in this situation, we would ask everyone to uh, visit the various public information sites out there, including ready.hawaii.gov, uh, to learn how they can be better prepared for themselves and their families. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for all your help. Um, next question would go to Assistant Chief Darren Chen. We know that HPD works alongside first responders all the time, but during a crisis such as an approaching hurricane, what role does HPD play with other first responders, specifically on Oahu? HPD is fortunate to have the opportunity to work and train with our first responder partners throughout the year, not just when there's an you know, emer emergency or a disaster. For hurricanes and tsunamis, HPD would assist the uh, Department of Emergency Management and Oahu Civil Defense in issuing alerts and warnings and giving out shelter instructions. And depending on on the nature of the emergency and just how much lead time we have, you know, we would assist with the shelter openings and uh, resident evacuation. Awesome, great. Jennifer, for, for Oahu residents specifically, again, how can they best prepare their home in advance for an emergency? So there's a number of things that people can do um, well before a disaster and then just in time as a storm's approaching. 
So I really recommend everybody go and download a resource on our website, www.honolulu.gov forward slash DEM. It's called the Homeowner's Handbook. And it has a range of options for taking protective measures on your home, everything from securing your roof to covering windows. It lays out a whole range of things you can do and many of them relatively low cost. So that's really something that people wanna look at now because it's gonna to be too late if you use that during a storm, unfortunately. Another thing is it won't protect your home, but this is the key to a faster recovery is review your insurance policy. People who are uninsured or underinsured are real problems after a disaster. So take it out now, make sure that you have adequate coverage. Um, if you're a renter, many renters don't know that there is coverage available in the form of renter's insurance. It's relatively low cost. And make sure you have flood insurance if you're in a flood hazard area. That's really important thing that you can do now. Um, also make sure, look around your outside area. A lot of those things that are out there can become flying debris and missiles during a hurricane. Um, you wanna do everything from keeping your trees trimmed but for making sure any kind of excess junk you're storing outside or even stuff that you use every day that you have a plan to strap it down as the storm's coming so it doesn't become something that causes more damage uh, later on. So as that storm's approaching, we want you to put that plan in place, get everything secured outside, clear off your lanai, do some last minute tree trimming if you have to, and then move all your items, valuable items away from windows and doors. Um, one final thing you might want to do now is to video or photograph your items in your home. Um, that can be really helpful afterwards to document losses that you've suffered. So these are all small things that make a big difference, um, but I think the best thing you could do is go take a look at that homeowner's handbook because those are the key things to, to keeping your home safe. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. I, I absolutely agree with that. Um, next question. We're going to go back to, to Luke from Hyema. Um, if people did need to go to a shelter with COVID, with the COVID-19 pandemic still going on, how, how would it be different, if at all? Yeah, obviously, with COVID-19, uh, we have a, a very unique situation that traditionally we haven't had uh, during tropical uh, storm season. As shelters open up, as we, we face various tropical systems approaching the state, uh, we know that the shelter capacity due to CDC uh, recommendations will be at a much lower level due to the physical distancing requirements. So when an individual with their family and friends and loved ones goes to a shelter, they may experience the following uh, activities that are not traditional, including being screened, uh, maybe having to answer a, a series of health questions about um, uh, the, the current kind of uh, health situation of the family. And then there also may be temperature checks. You've seen similar types of these things in some of our businesses uh, and at the airport. We really want to reinforce that um, going to a shelter should be the last resort. Um, as we have stated here uh, in, in other venues, uh, you're most comfortable where, where you live. And so uh, if you've taken the proper precautions, uh, sheltering in place is probably the best. Um, if you could shelter with a loved one or a neighbor, that may also be recommended. And then obviously, uh, if, if things are, are not safe, then you should go to a public shelter. The other thing that we will be reinforcing uh, again with COVID is to ensure that you have masks, maybe several of them, uh, and your personal hygiene kits uh, if you do have to go to a public shelter. Good tips. You know, everything's changed with this COVID-19, so it's an added an added thing to do. Um, another question for HPD. After a storm or hurricane hits, what should people do? What would you recommend the public do at that point? Uh, safety first. Assess your surroundings. Look for possible hazards. Don't touch on down power lines. Consider them dangerous and live and just keep a far distance away from these areas and just call 911. Okay. Thank you. For um, Jennifer at DEM, um, what are specific things Oahu residents should consider while making their family plan? I know Oahu has a dense population, so I'm not sure if that would be a factor with anything in, in creating their family plan. 
I think uh, one thing all the residents can do, which is completely free, is to sign up for hnl.info alerts. So these are text alerts that are going to warn you if there's a hazard that you need to be aware of. So regardless of where you live, those will go out on when there's something that's significant that we need to worry about. The next thing is, no matter where you live, know where to go and what to do. First, you got to know your hazards. Um, we all face unique risks depending on where we live. So know if you're in an area that's going to get inundation from um, floodwaters in a hurricane, or if you're in a tsunami evacuation zone, or even a dam evacuation zone, because the key to knowing what to do is to knowing what might affect you. And then next, look at our website and know there's emergency actions to take. Um, a lot of times we see confusion. Um, people don't realize that what you need to do in a tsunami and where you need to go might not be the same as where you need to go or what you need to do in a hurricane situation. So make sure you know those instructions for each hazard based on where you live. Um, if you have special circumstances, um, you really need to make sure those are incorporated into your plans. For instance, many people live in high rises, um, you know, in downtown Honolulu. What if the elevator goes out? Um, are you able to get down the stairs? Um, what is your emergency plan in that situation? We have areas where there's one way in and one way out and roads likely to get cut off. Um, people need to consider if they're able to stay there several days if the road is cut off, or maybe they do want to evacuate to an area that's less likely um, to be cut off um, after the event. If they have loved ones they need to reach or take care of. So you really need to think about those circumstances um, that affect you and the uniqueness of their plans. Um, anything from your personal medical um, situation to where you live on the island. And then finally, the thing I always like to encourage people to do is to make a checklist that you can pull out just in time. You know, there are all these little tidbits that we give people. And I found that just in time, I forget because you have kind of this emergency situation going on and it's easy to forget simple things. So even if it's completely simple, um, I have something on my uh, cat's carrier that says, pick out the food from the cabinet and take it with you. Um, and I, it's a note to myself in the heat of the moment to don't forget this in the disaster plan. So anything that you need to gather at the last minute from your house, have that on your checklist. Things like charging your electronics, maybe that's something that you do 24 hours before the storm is expected to make landfall. Filling your car with gas, really simple things to think about now, but at the moment that becomes difficult. So once you know that plan, doing a checklist of even the smallest details, I find is a really helpful tip. Those are excellent tips. I, I better write those down myself. Just everybody had such great information. Thank you so much to our partners at Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, City and County of Honolulu's Department of Emergency Management, and of course, our Honolulu Police Department for sharing your firsthand experience and helping us all better prepare. We really, really do appreciate your time. And to all of those watching, please be sure to share this video on your social media sites and go to our website to download your copy of our Handbook for Emergency Preparedness and quick tips at hawaiianelectric.com slash prepare. Be sure to watch our next episode where we will focus on Maui County and hear from their key partners in emergency preparation and response. You won't wanna miss it. Again, thank you for your time and taking action today to better prepare for tomorrow. Mahalo, malamapono, and ahui ho.